De La Wright, my envies. Welcome. Olori Runke is alleged to have cried, and she said, if not for the pressure from her family, that she would have left the palace. That the pressure, the embarrassment, everything that is coming with it is getting out of hand. That the owner of Ife is being very, very like inconsiderate towards her. That she cried so much because in the middle of the con of a conversation, allegedly she was having a conversation with the owner of Ife, personal conversation where she thought that my bring about peace because lately it's been buzz 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 between herself and the only of effect you know one thing that happens in relationship is that when a person maybe a man or a woman stop like finds a reason or find out that there's been a seat of distrust that's been sown it makes it very um, almost impossible for that person to trust anymore apparently this is an issue of trust that is playing out out there for them and um, um, with due respect I do think that um, um, Olori Runke needs to play smarter and understand that if you want to be with this man, you cannot allow, you know, the thought of your family to be the in thing in a relationship. The thing is that every woman wants to know that a man has... Um, you know, have full um, um, interest and a man also wants to know that a woman has his full interest. And so they said that she had um, also, she had um, uh, uh, made an appointment to speak to the Oni of Ife and she came, she was allowed to see the Oni of Ife and she was having a conversation. In the middle of that conversation, a call rolled in and that call was um, from Olori Naomi. From what they are saying, allegedly, I told you I'm not there. When I get this information, I I bring it to you. They said that call was from Olori Naomi. Apparently, um, Oni had asked Naomi to do something and Naomi was about uh, reverting back to the Oni of Ife. And so immediately he got that call from Olori Naomi. He now um, made calls for his um, entourage to come, driver and everything. And they said that was how he left um, 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 uh, Olori Runke kneeling down there and he just left and they zoomed off to Olori Naomi. Now, the information we are getting is that the only of Ife and Naomi are getting closer by the day. Things are looking really good for them. Um, to the glory of God, I pray it stays that way with all of these struggles and fight. And so um, when Naomi is in Akure, Oni is always going to see. They said that he zoomed off to go meet with Olori Naomi. Apparently, um, he uh, wanted to go there for, I don't know, I think they said lunch or something in Akure. So uh, that was how he zoomed up and left Olori Runke. And they said this did not sit well with her. She felt so bad and she cried. You know, usually they would kneel down to speak to Kabi AC. And of course, if you want to talk to the king, you sit, you kneel down. That is what happened. So when Oni left her kneeling down, they said she knelt down there and she was crying the entire time. So sometimes you know that women, uh, we tend to find ourselves in situations that we may never be able to control. Maybe this is all about her family. I'm not here to make excuses for her, but I want to believe that she is old enough to make these decisions for herself. Um, there's nothing like being in an unhealthy relationship. If you're not finding peace and happiness in the relationship that you are in, what the hell are you doing there? Because this does not seem like anything that has any, any form of love. Even herself, she said it. When she was interviewed, they asked her, things about herself and her husband. She said it openly that it was culture that brought them together. I've never seen any couple that will say what brought them together is culture and not even love, not even anything that is close to love. You're talking about culture bringing you together. What are you talking about? And so that is how it is. And so she um, was trying to explain things. I, I really do think that by the time she realizes what they are doing to her, it might be very late because at the end of the day, no matter how lenient a man is you can never put your family before um your husband except you are not ready to be in that marriage and besides Oni is king okay he is an imperial majesty he's not just a local king he is across the globe like for the Yoruba people he is big and there is no way your word will come before his own and there is no way you can win no matter how influential your family is do not forget that he is a ruling king right now he comes from a ruling household as well he is blue blood that as a matter of fact, his own is navy blue blood. <laughs> Hey, he's a ticker blue blooded. So when you're playing with this bad, you know that you you are ready for that battle that you're bringing forth to him. I hope you know that. 
Anyways, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Della Rama. I bring you fresh and spicy juice from the sauce. and still on the Royals. How are you guys doing? Della right, my lovers. How are you guys doing? Midweek to you. Love you. I hope your week is going as expected. Sometimes it may not necessarily go the way we plan it, but God has a better reason. I do know that we all believe in God and we know that God is doing everything behind the scene for us for our purpose, okay, and our profit as well. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. If you're yet to subscribe, kindly go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And do not forget to turn on the notification bell. So we are talking about how only of if any, um, um, allegedly left um, Runke kneeling down before him and trying to beg and make peace and walked and, to, and zoomed off to go and meet the love of his life, Olori Naomi. <laughs> Oh Jesus, there's nothing can be that can be this devastating. Nothing that can be this devastating. Long live the owner of Ife and long live Olori and Naomi. God is going to be there for you. And at the end of the day, win, you will win. And you know, the world will celebrate with you. So they said that she is trying to draw back and she's trying to make effort to, you know, make the husband know that she is on um, her side. I mean, his side and, you know, trying to change her decision. But, you know, when something has been said, as in, you know, you have push yourself, push your husband to a point where he now realizes that, look, look, you are on your family's side, not his side. You know, it might be very, very difficult for you to try and convince him that, um, uh, yes, you are with him now. That is one difficulty in that this whole situation might be. But be it as it may, maybe as a wife, she needs to keep trying and trying and trying and trying. That is all I think she needs to be doing right now. Anyways, um, um, Oni of Ife has made up his mind to be with Queen Naomi, respective of the circumstances. And uh, we, you know, right now, you can never really tell because it does look as if really this thing is um, uh, buried beneath the deepest part of anything. The relationship between Oni of Ife and Queen Naomi, it seems as if there's no, nothing anybody can do to um, um, break that relationship. And I feel like this whole drama is exercise in futility that the wives are fighting. At the end of the day, this couple is going to win. I have seen this happen over and over and over again, where people come in between uh, lovers and they think that they have succeeded. At the end of the day, the man goes back to his own uh, marriage. I keep using David Doe as a po as a contact. Thank God. I um I mean as a case study, thank God David Doe is also an early celebrity, not in the class of the only of affair in terms of age. He is a small boy, it's no basis for comparison, please. And with due respect, I beg all of you, okay? Before you know that. One thing I respect about the Yoruba people, they, they respect their elders, especially their king. You go and open your mouth and say anything. The beef is double. They will beef you big time. So that is why when you talk about royalty, as a matter of fact, everybody deserves respect. When you speak about people, you learn to speak respectfully. And so as I'm saying now, like this trauma and David Doe thing, okay? Um, you saw what um, transpired. I know two years ago, I was blogging on that issue where um, they were busy dragging Choma. As if I knew, I said, look, sometimes you can never really tell because the way Choma behaves, there's no man that will not like her or love her. She has no intention. She does not seek um, social media validation. And that's the difference between these women. When you look at Choma, you look at uh, Queen Naomi. Queen Naomi does not seek social media validation. I do understand that a lot of people don't even understand the difference. When they see her come on social media and she's dressed and maybe she's dancing and do, they think that she's seeking social, that's not seeking social media validation. People who seek social media validation, they come, they open their mouth, they talk anyhow. This woman doesn't talk anyhow. Queen Naomi, you hardly even hear her talk. The only time you hear Queen Naomi talk is when she is preaching, okay? So right now, what I am saying is that this woman eh, and only of Ife, nobody, it might take a whole lot. We might be blogging this thing for two years. We might get tired like me. My, me too, I also get tired of this merry-go-round exercise. But the truth remains that I'm a blogger. I have uh, people, like 18,000 people, 18,000 community of people who are following my blog. I have to be there and always um, give them update on what is going on. So right now, they say she cried and 
cried and cried over what Oni did, uh, Oni leaving her there and going after uh, Olori Naomi. I said, uh, maybe that year's just started. I'm going to bring you more update. I appreciate you so much. Thank you.